Okay, it's nine o'clock, it's nine o'clock, it's nine o'clock. I'm not breathing. You're probably breathing. Okay, I don't want to receive an email. It's nine o'clock. I don't want to receive an email. It's 901. 901. Is it official? Official. Make sure it didn't go into junk. I don't know. No email. You're hoppy. It's 901. You're being hoppy. 901, 901. I think it's kind of a dumb system. I thought it would actually be better if they said, like, you know, everybody. Yes, it should be. I want to see something that says match. Yeah, just say, like, you know, because you never know. 902. You just never know if there's, like, a good flag. 902. When do we call it? That's official. No, it's supposed to be 9 o'clock on the dot. <laughs> Jolene asks if I'm good. Do I check like if other people did got it? <laughs> they do actually. Because I didn't match my number. Oh no, that was 14 hours ago. Be wait, 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 wait. Match status is available at NRP system. Oh, yeah. You can go to the national. If you go there, it'll say that you match, but it won't show you where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> that was an option. NRP, you mean ERAS? No, NRP, like where you submitted the. Oh, the match thing. Yeah. Never looked. I don't even know what it looks like, to be honest. I can't tell you. Where, where are you? Um... Where you selected your match to so some match. Yeah. I but I never looked at it, so I don't even know what it looks like. Match.com, no. Um residency match. Yeah, NRP says to check NRP website. Okay, 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 okay. It would okay. Be better than stressing out like looking at it all day for me. Yes! Not so eligible. You're not so eligible. Oh, you matched somewhere, buddy. Oh, God, I can think we God. don't know where. Uh, uh, uh. We don't know where. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm. I'm back. It's been. 24 hours, a little bit more since I matched. So this will be a little bit different podcast episode or video and oh my god my heart is still just racing and I just I really can't believe it I can't believe that all my perseverance hard work and everything I've been through not just like the past year the past four to five years college life it's it's amazing to finally be matched and finally know that a residency a hospital system liked me for me and wants me and knows that I'll be a good doctor normally I like to when it's my own I like to write out either like read from a blog post and this is kind of like before I've written the blog post because I do want to write and I've received so much encouragement and so much positive feedback and requests to talk about this and also requests to talk about how I dual applied and why I do applied. So in the future, near future, once I organize my thoughts a little bit, heart rate goes down, cortisol levels go down, 
which is a stress hormone, but a good stress hormone. Doesn't always have to be bad. It's all the same. <sighs> just have to take a breath and just thank God and for being here, for being in this moment, being very present and mindful of all the opportunities, all the people, all the mentors, all my friends, families, loved ones, everyone in my life that has had an impact on me, has supported me, motivated me, encouraged me, and believed in me. It wasn't as a surprise for them because they've always believed in this moment. And I guess I didn't realize it would be like this. I am usually a very positive person overall. Um, I actually received that as an interview question, which was odd. It was like, how much percent positivity are you? And I was like, 90% positive. And I, yeah, that's one of the ways I've been able to keep going through all the challenges that I've been through. Trauma, failing step leave of absence, failing exams, surgery, like all the different things that have happened. I've gone through it and people have always asked me like, what keeps you going? And there's so many things that keep me going. What my therapist always says is, what is the evidence? What is the evidence that things in this case will go right for me? And I held on to that and it worked. I knew that I applied, even though I didn't apply all over the country, which is what most people would do in maybe in general, just to increase their chances that they would get into a residency program, apply all over the country. In my specific situation, since I took a leave of absence, my husband went above me, matched in Chicago. He's now an intern finishing up his intern in neurology, intern year. I knew that I wanted to be in the Chicago area because my husband is the main reason I am literally here today. I wouldn't have been able to get through college, gap years, med school, leave of absence without him. And so, of course, I was going to stay in residency I wanted in the same area as him. And I did apply. I set my boundary. I knew it was like, okay, what is the maximum amount we can be away from each other? If at the horrible worst chance, we did something similar when he applied last year. And we decided our border was going to be the Midwest, that even if if we had to live apart for a year, we would find a way to travel every weekend or something. But that, I really didn't want that to happen. But still, I applied in the Midwest within four hours of Chicago. And then when I received interviews, which I was very surprised. Well, I guess back up. I applied to both psych and family medicine. And I'll talk about a lot more in a bit of why the two, but those were the two specialties that I saw myself going into that I would be happy in both options. I know that I enjoy talking to patients, to people, hearing their story, supporting them with their mental health, sexual health, their health and how it connects to their life, especially working with marginalized patients and working within health equity. And so I applied to both specialties also because psychiatry has become more competitive. So I received also a strong suggestion from my program, from my school saying you need to apply to specialties because most likely you won't get into psychiatry. <sighs> we'll find out on Friday if that holds true. Um, I'm taking a sip of my peppermint vanilla tea because that's part of the reason I'm so stressed, but we'll see. I received interviews a lot. I applied to 44 programs in the Midwest in that four hour 
distance from Chicago within, and I received over 50% in your views. And I was so thankful. I'll talk about strategies later on how I went through that, but I'm just overview right now. And I did receive more family medicine and psychiatry. Again, I'll talk about that later of the reasonings and things like that. As I started accepting interviews, I since I had so many, I became more picky in only accepting places that were within, I believe I did two hours, two hours from Chicago with the idea of, okay, we can live halfway, one hour drive one way, one hour drive the other way for each of us to go. And then when rank lifts came and I submitted them last week, I believe. Yeah, last week. And or maybe it was two weeks ago. I don't know anymore. I decided to only match 14 of the like 23, 22 places that I accepted that I e or even did interviews at. And I chose to do the ones that were within 60 to 75 minutes, specifically focusing on psychiatry because that is, I believe my preferred. Again, I'll be, I'll be very excited either way. I'll still be a doctor. I'll still do mental health, sexual health, reproductive health in its own way. <sighs> I put psychiatry, I put all my psych at the top and family medicine below that. And I went through every single program, especially in family medicine, because I had a lot of family medicine that I really liked that were just perfect for me. And I debated whether to put family medicine higher, but I decided to do my five psychiatry first and then the rest family medicine after. Still doing my very favorite family medicine programs, some of the programs even that had psychiatry like inpatient units or psychiatry or even the program directors had talked to me that they would find a way to help me shadow and work with the psychiatrists and psychologists. So I put those a little bit higher. Okay. So yeah, I guess that that was that. We'll talk about that after Friday. See, see if it worked. Again, this was my experience, like everything that I talked about. Everyone can make their own decisions, their own way to do things. I'm holding on to my lucky penny, which was my husband Jonah's penny I gave to him before he did his step two exam because he was very nervous. And of course he passed and then he gave it back and then he gave it to me when I did my step two, especially after my history with step one. It helped, it motivated me, it helped me pass. If there's luck involved, which uh, I'll talk about luck in a bit. Um, and then I've been wearing it all week. It hasn't been a good week, to say the least. There have definitely been a lot of nightmares, a lot of stress hormone in my body, which is understandable. Or yesterday was very stressful because I didn't know if even if I... Even if I had phenomenal interviews, phenomenal interactions, if that would be enough, if I was enough. And yesterday was a determination and a external acknowledgement that I am enough, that I am good enough to be a physician, that even if there have been individuals, which there have been, um, there have been physicians, there have been people that have told me to my face that I am not good enough, that I will not get into residency, that I will not become a doctor, but I'm here today saying that that's not true, and I made it. I literally made it. So, 
yeah um let's go back and the matching video if I'll do it at the beginning or the end maybe I'll put it here next the 30 minutes before I matched were extremely stressful I have not been this stressed in a long time oh my god I I was one I was so thankful that Jonah had the day off he had his last GMF shift on Sunday so he had today off magically we were gonna he was gonna request it off do a health day from residency but thankfully he got it and he made me coffee and was making me waffles and I could not sit still I could not stand still I was bouncing around my stress mode is cleaning the house I was cleaning the house I was running around I I kept counting down the minutes I was texting my friends oh my goodness it was it was it was terrifying and then I remembered thankfully how do I manage my stress I dance so I put on my pump up dancing music and that was helpful the day before I went with my cohort uh my family medicine leadership program we got to do art therapy which was really therapeutic and helpful highly recommend if you are waiting for your match results for Friday to do some sort of art it was just a blank canvas Colorado mountains Chicago the lake nature what is this Jonah thought it was my Jonah the neurologist thought it was a cloud please say it looks like a brain that was painful but okay I know I didn't do the sulci right but this was from memory but anyway and you can kind of see the Dr. Moss it's like in shine anyway going forward but yeah I videotaped um what happened my husband was just in the corner like he doesn't express he doesn't express his stress the same way I even asked him like how were you not this stressed when he matched but so like he expresses his stress and emotions so much so differently than me but he was petting the dog and bluffing up the dog everywhere which would have made me super stressed too but anyway uh, so you can see me like chatting with him out in the corner and when he matched he did not get an email so the whole point was okay we're not expecting an email because if we get an email that means that we have to soap and I explained this so much yesterday to my family who's not in medicine um and so soaping is all those individuals that are today trying to get into residency because they did not get accepted yesterday and they have to reapply resubmit their application update their application maybe submit letters of recommendation very stressful I am very thankful I didn't have to do it and I send all the love and support for all the individuals who are in that position know that you can do it I know people last year from that did soap and did match so don't let that get up I was just looking at the AMA website there's some great links um yesterday when I was freaking or a couple days ago when I was freaking out last year like 500 family medicine places soaped that were matched interesting I think only 80 were psych last year and 10 I just got an email only 10 psychiatry programs available to soap which is pretty scary but I send all my love and encouragement and please pray and help those individuals you can help them by sending me your love your support your food helping them call residency program giving them connections so anyway last year when Jonah applied he didn't get an email which means he matched this year thankfully they sent an email saying that you did match and well on the different email which was very confusing because I checked the wrong email but then they also put it on the match webs on where we submitted our rank data on um, whether you're soap eligible so that's super confusing if you were soap eligible that means you didn't match so very stressful I'm here today I matched I'm good enough I'm going to be a resident I'm gonna be a doctor I'm gonna get my degree in 
a month and a, a week or two. I'll find out on Friday if I get psychiatry or family medicine. Most likely it will be psychiatry because the AMA reported that I think like 90% of MDs who are currently in medical school get, get their top three choices. So that's why I put the psychiatry programs that I really wanted to go to in my top three. And I would love any of them. Some are a little bit farther. And so we might have to change our location that we're planning on living in. So that's going to be the bigger stress. Um, but we'll let that happen this weekend. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Um, what happened next? Anyway, I matched. I was super excited. We had planned to go out to nature because you can see my other episodes being in nature. And it's there's a lot of research of how much it can decrease your stress level, improve your anxiety, your depression. And exercise also decreases depression, anxiety has been found. So we had already planned, and I'll, I'll put some pictures of going to Starved Rock with these guys um I don't usually sell them podcast episode that's my German Shepherd Eclipse and Midnight the Husky um which has been stressful because she does she was recently diagnosed with cancer so we're also working with that with her being in diapers and incontinence but um okay so we had already planned to go out no matter if I matched or didn't match and good stress anti-stress dog emotional support puppy so we went on a wonderful hike and it was really cool I'll post the pictures of we went to this hike four or five years ago when we were first year medical uh, five years ago then when we were both first year medical students and I think it was during COVID like the first couple months of COVID similar time period so it's really it'll be really cool to see the pictures like five years later so went on a hike went to an awesome place to eat um in a small town and yeah we got home we were so exhausted and just but I I couldn't sleep a lot because I was just so much anxiety like positive but I guess still anxious because I don't know Friday's results Another thing that helps me, um, if you look at my website, medpsychmoss.com, I writing in this virtual journal has been really helpful to really help be able to take my emotions and start to be able to verbalize my emotions and thoughts. Uh, so <laughs> since I couldn't fall asleep, I just was too anxious, knew it's important from research. We show if you can't sleep, for like 20 minutes, you have to get out of bed. I think I waited a bit longer than that, but got out of bed and wrote. And I'll put that in an upcoming blog post. Pretty much just state a little bit of what I did earlier, but of just like, I did it. I made it. I'm so proud of myself. Proud of my accomplishments. I did it. In the near future, I'll make another one about how to do apply. I also want to do a more specific episode on applying to residency with disabilities because I was more open with it. I, I wrote a blog post about it, but I want to be, I want to make sure I also do a podcast episode on it. So I'll make sure I'll do a podcast episode on like applying to residency with disabilities, like the dual application process. Cause I know that was really challenging. There's not a lot of information. I just seem to be the person that talks about taboos. I'll own that. Um, if there's a taboo or stigma in medicine, I seem to be the, the vocal individual and advocate with talking about it. So I'll make sure to talk about that. And yeah, if you have any other questions or anything you want to ask me for me to include in future episodes, please let me know. I'll be working on that over the next couple of weeks. After our match on Friday, I have one more, two more weeks, a couple more weeks of like a pre-residency boot camp that our school does. 
And then I have two weeks of geriatric medicine. And then I have two weeks off that we had planned to move. And I have family coming in to graduate, which I'm very excited about. Family from Mexico, my cousins. I'm, I'm very excited. Thank you so much for listening in for this bonus episode about my, my current reactions and where I'm at emotionally and just what what it looks like right now being matched uh thank you for being here and i hope you follow along on wherever you're listening to your podcasts follow me on social media at med psych moss and thank you for listening to my journey as a patient and a future doctor future dr moss thank you everyone take care Yeah, Minnie.